In this segment, we're going to talk about elliptic partial differential equations and how to solve them by using the gauss seidel method. If you want more details on this topic, including a textbook chapter, you can go to the Numerical Methods Open Courseware webpage, click on Keyword, and click on Elliptic Partial Differential Equations. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to take the same example we've been taking it, taking for the other ways of solving elliptic partial differential equations numerically. So we are looking at a rectangular plate and uh, the temperatures on the edges of this rectangular plate are given to be these. And what we want to do is we want to find out what the temperature will be inside this plate as a function of x and y. The temperature of the plate, uh, the steady state temperature of the plate is given by this particular uh, second order linear elliptic partial differential equation and that's what we want to use to be able to find out what the temperature inside this plate will be. So recapping what we have done basically is that we have taken this rectangular plate and broken it up into square grids here. So we have m plus 1 nodes uh, in the x-axis and n plus 1 nodes in the y-axis and what we are doing is that we are writing down the equation for the temperature at a particular node so we take the same node we look at it uh, here based on node numbering the x uh, node is given as the number i the y uh, coordinate is given the node j and uh, we have already found out that when we take this Laplacian equation, the second order linear uh, elliptic partial differential which we, which we had, it can be discretized in this particular form here. So where we have the temperature at the node which we are interested in is given in terms of the temperature at the node here, the temperature at the node here, temperature at the node here, and the temperature at the node here. So the temperature at the node in the middle, which is right here, is given by the temperatures of the four surrounding nodes and that's what the discretized equation gives us. So what gauss seidel method is going to do is going to help us to find out how to uh, solve this particular equation, this discretized equation. So we have the discretized equation as given by this here. What we do is we rewrite it in terms of the other four. So we write down the Tij which is the temperature at the current node or at a particular node in terms of the four surrounding nodes. That doesn't mean that we can find out what the temperature here is. It's just that if we assume certain temperatures at these particular nodes here or if they are given by the boundary conditions, we can find an estimate of the temperature of the current node. So it becomes an iterative process. So basically what gauss seidel method does here in this case is it solves the equations iteratively until uh, you meet a certain pre-specified tolerance. If you want more information on the gauss seidel method, all you have to do is to click on the annotation at the bottom of the screen and you'll be taken to the uh, videos which show you how the gauss seidel method works. So we're going to take the same example as we've taken for the direct method. So in the gauss seidel method, what we are doing for the example, we're taking a plate which is 3 meters wide, 2.4 meters long. Yeah, the temperatures on the four sides are given by these and what we want to do is we want to be able to find out what the temperature uh, in, the, in the plate is at different points. We are going to take a, a grid length of 0 0.6 meters which basically means that uh, uh, we'll have four grids along the x-axis and we'll have five grids along the y-axis and we're going to assume that the initial temperature guess at the interior nodes is 0 degrees Celsius. Please note that this is only the initial temperature guess, not the initial temperature of the plate, but what we're going to guess at the different nodes which we're going to choose, the temperature would be 0 degrees Celsius. You can choose, um, a better guess would have been to choose the average of the boundary uh, condition uh, um, temperatures, but uh, just to keep things simple, we're going to choose at 0 degrees Celsius. So here we are, we are discretizing the plate uh, into, as I said, four different uh, grids along the uh, x-axis. So we have one, two, three, 
four, five nodes along the x-axis and then we are discretizing it into five grids along the y-axis where one, two, three, four, five, six, we have uh, six nodes on the y-axis. So we have six nodes along the y-axis, five nodes along the uh, along the x-axis, which makes it that we have total number of 30 nodes in this problem. However, you can very well see that the temperatures at all the external nodes which are here, they're all given to us based on the boundary conditions. So we have to only find out what the temperature is at the interior nodes, which are nine in number. So, uh, as I was talking to you about that we have, uh, we have uh, not 9 but 12, we have 12 nodes at which we don't know what the temperature is and those are these particular nodes right here. Uh, we, uh, look at the numbering of the nodes, we call this num node num to be 0, 0, then 1, 0, 2, 0 and similarly the nodes here are 0, 1, 0, 2 and so on and so forth. And since we have uh, 12 uh, 12 nodes at which we don't know the temperature so somehow what we have to do is we have to set up 12 equations and 12 unknowns but what we are doing here is that since we are using the gauss seidel method we're going to write down each equation for each of these nodes in terms of the other nodes which show up in the equation which means that for example if i'm writing the equation for t1 comma 1 it'll be given in terms of so t1 comma 1 will be given in terms of the temperature here temperature here, temperature here, and temperature here. Uh, so that's how it's going to work out for all the, all the nodes. So let's take an illustration here that we begin to solve for the temperature of each node. This is the gauss seidel method a version of the discretized equation for the second order linear elliptic partial differential equation. We are assuming all the internal nodes temperature guess is zero to begin with because it's an iterative method. So if I want to find the temperature at node 1 comma 1, like for example this. Now node 1 comma 1 will be now written in terms of temperature here, temperature here, temperature here and temperature here. And that's what we are doing here. This is T at 2 comma 1, T at 0 comma 1, T at 1 comma 2 and T at 1 comma 0. However, the temperature at T0, 1 is the boundary temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. The temperature at T1, 0 is the boundary temperature of 50 degrees Celsius at that particular point. So that's why we're substituting 50 here and 75 here. For the other temperatures, we substitute 0 and 0 because that's the initial guess which we're assuming for those internal node temperatures. We're dividing by 4, we get the temperature at that particular node to be 31.25 degrees Celsius. Now let's let's take another node for an example. As I said, that uh, for this iteration, iteration number one, we'll have to take 12 such uh, we'll have to write 12 such equations uh, to be able to find the 12 different temperatures after our first iteration. But let's take another example. So T1 comma 2. So let me just erase uh, uh, whatever I have done here. So we have T1 comma 2. So we are right here. We are at this particular node. Now, this particular node, you'll find out that the temperatures at that particular node will be given in terms of this node, this node, this node, and this node. And what you're seeing here is that the temperatures are given in terms of the three internal nodes and one external node, which is at 75 degrees Celsius. So let's take care of that. So this is the external node, T is equal to 0, 2, and the temperature there is 75. The temperature at T2, 2 is 0. The temperature at T1, 3 is 0, but the temperature at T1, 1 is not 0, although it's an internal node, it's 31.25. So basically what you have to understand is that as you're going from node to node, use the most recent temperature to be able to find what the temperature at the next node is. So based on that, we get 26.5625 as our answer for the temperature at node 1, 2. You'll continue doing the same things for the other nodes and that's how you'll be able to find out what the temperatures will be at each and every node for the first iteration. So I have summarized uh, the temperatures which we get up to uh, the integer part of the temperature uh, for
for at all these internal nodes. This is the temperature which we get at the internal nodes by following the same procedure for each and every node. And uh, we have to figure out that hey, uh, what is the uh, should we go for another iteration? As you can see in this case, the uh, relative absolute relative approximator at this stage will be 100% for all these different nodes because we assume the initial temp initial guess to be zero at the, as a temperature at these nodes. So we know that we have to conduct more iterations. So let's go and see how we conduct another iteration. So if we're going to go for our second iteration, and let's suppose now we are talking again about node one, comma one. Again, we will write it in terms of the nodes which are around that particular node. We substitute. This is the temperature which we got at um, from the first iteration. This temperature is from the boundary condition. This temperature is from the uh, first iteration, and this temperature is from the boundary condition. And we get a temperature of uh, 42.9688 degrees centigrade at uh, node one comma one. Now again, what we can do is so what we are supposed to do is to calculate what the absolute relative approximator at that particular node is, which is the present temperature minus the previous temperature divided by the present temperature right here. So 42.9688 is the present temperature which was calculated at the end of iteration 2. However, 31.25 was what we calculated in our previous iteration and it gives us uh, absolute relative uh, error of 27.27%. Uh, So we conducted uh, again this uh, iteration number two and these are the results which we obtained for the temperatures at the end of the iteration number two. We also calculated the absolute relative approximate errors at the end of the second iteration and we find out that uh, it, it is these are different numbers at different nodes but the maximum absolute relative approximate error which we are getting is at this particular node and that's what's going to determine whether we should keep on going further. So if somebody told us, hey, I can accept 80% error, we still have to go further, uh, conduct one more iteration, uh, more iterations, uh, because we have not reached the pre-specified torus of 80% at each and every node. So it's not what is the minimum uh, absolute relative approximate error, but the maximum absolute relative approximate at any node, which is going to determine whether you have gone through enough iterations or not. So you understand how the process works. So what we what we have done here is that we have summarized some of the temperatures which we got from the these are the temperatures which we got from the first iteration. This is the temperature which we got from the second iteration. And then we conducted more iterations as we go along, and these are the results at the end of the tenth iteration. In fact, these uh, results which you are seeing at the end of the tenth iteration are within one percent of the pre-specified tolerance. So when we compared all of these numbers, this number with the ninth iteration, this number with the ninth iteration, and all of these numbers were compared with the corresponding values of the ninth iteration. The absolute relative approximate error which we got for all of these 12 nodes was less than 1%. So if somebody would have said that, hey, you can have as much as 1% pre-specified tolerance, then we know that we can accept uh, the results at the end of the 10th iteration to be our temperature distribution in the plate at steady state. So that's how the gas idle method works and that's the end of this segment.